what do you get if you cross a Ryland with a Cheviot? You get the Lavender Blue Collection 2022! God, I'm excited! <laughs> Messing about on the river <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Good to see you again. It's Stuart here from my shop, The Woolpatch, a yarn and fabric haberdashery shop in Long Melford, Suffolk, UK. First of all, can I start off by saying thank you very much for all your comments on the last episode of the vlog regarding the plastic bags and reusing them. It was phenomenal. Every single one of you pretty much said the same thing and we've got a way forward. I will be giving the customers a choice on whether they would like a reused plastic bag that the wool came in or whether they would like a paper bag and that's as simple as that. Uh, but And so far everyone has uh, who I've asked has always opted for a plastic bag. But as some of you said it's still nice to have a few paper bags for the tourist who has come for the experience. But otherwise, great way of reusing all those plastic bags and maybe even giving them a third or a fourth life. Um, I was overwhelmed by all your comments uh, and seeing you all get involved really means a lot. So thank you very much. Right, so let's go into another finished make that I'm showing off. Hot off Irene's needles. Thank you, Irene. It is called The Stour by Martin Story. And for this one, we've gone outside on location. <laughs> So here we are in Long Melford, literally 10 minutes from my shop, which is in that direction, just a short walk. In fact, we're on the same part where I did a previous video showing you the wool patch walk, where it goes behind the shop showing you all the water meadows. Well, this is this area. It's um, uh, where the Stour runs behind Long Melford, parallel with the road, through the water meadows, and then weaves its way out to the bottom end of Long Melford. It's a lovely weir just down there. I thought I'll go down there set up camera and show you the Stour by the River Stour. Boom! <laughs> Right, so you've seen where the River Stour starts from Cambridge. It's worked its way along and it will now, after this weir, and then it turns round to go over towards Sudbury and then to Bures and on to Manning Tree and then to Harwich where we'll go in a little while where it opens up into the sea. So, messing about on the river. <laughs> <laughs> I love fishing. Do you fish? I used to do it as a kid a lot. Just get out my rod, get the tent. Oh, it would be lovely.
um, on the pier, Hapenny Pier. I think it's after half penny. We say Hapenny. Uh, and that's still a working pier too. I spotted a couple of fishermen back there and I've got the RNLI over there. Sorting out his boat. <laughs> so here I am wearing the Stour cardigan at the River Stour as it enters the sea. Brilliant hay. When I saw the pattern, I thought, yeah, that's perfect because we can talk about the area, we can talk about the river, uh, and and wear the pattern too. So and 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 get out and have a nice little photo shoot. Uh, the other reason was because it's using brushed fleece, and it didn't sell in the shop. So I had to. I well, I didn't have to, but when a yarn sits on the shelf for more than a year and you're not reordering you kind of think, yeah, it hasn't done very well. So I had an awful lot of yarn left over, a lot of cream and a lot of this color. I had eight balls left over. So I thought, do you know what? I'll find a pattern and I'll ask Irene to knit something up for me. Uh, and looking through the patterns for brushed fleece, this came up and when I saw it, I thought, yes, beautiful, lovely, simple cardigan, really stylish. And then seeing it called Stour 2, it, it was fate. And I thought, right, I can go and have fun on the River Stour and show you the local surroundings. So let me tell you more about this pattern. This is size small. I know. Yes, and I'm really big, but it is a size small. This took eight balls. I'm a 40 inch chest. Uh, it might have taken a little bit less. Um, it, the pattern says seven balls, but you know me and my arms, <laughs> they go on for forever as Irene says. And of course, I had a bit more on the, on, the, on, the, on the length too. It's wonderfully soft. This is on my skin, against my skin. I've already got a t-shirt underneath and it's not scratchy in the slightest. It doesn't even feel you know, where sometimes you just think it's going to make you, you, you your hair stand up and, you, and your skin scratch. Doesn't even feel like that at all. But sadly, it just didn't sell in the shop. This yarn still exists, though. Rowan is still selling it. It just didn't sell very well here. This colour is called Headland, shade number 267. And uh, if I get the computer, uh, they've got loads of colours in the brushed fleece range. I'm looking at 14 colours. Uh, but it's just the way it goes. Sometimes yarn sells really quickly and you know it's popular because you obviously then have to reorder. This one, I didn't have to reorder. And some colors were literally on the shelf for a year, uh, if not more, and this was one of them. Uh, so that's when I thought, right, well, we've got to do something with that, discontinue it, and then I'll have the yarn for myself. <laughs> but it is lovely. So even though it didn't sell very well here, it may be a yarn for you. You might like the feel of it, especially with that alpaca content. Just a little word of warning. It's such a lovely wool content, 65%, and with that baby alpaca. When you knit with it, and like this is in stocking stitch, it does really come together and attach to each other. So if you have to rip back, you might struggle because when you pull the yarn out and frog back, it will have really sort of attached its teeth, the, the hair to each other. So you will struggle to rip back. And I think that's another reason perhaps why people didn't come in to re buy more yarn to knit more garments because maybe their experience with it was uh, yes, perhaps not so positive, but it is so beautifully soft. There we are, that's The Stour by Martin Story in Brushed Fleece. <laughs> Yes, we've 
seen them all going up everywhere in food and in clothes and heating and so forth. Uh, they are going up in wool and in cotton uh, and they're going up a lot. Uh, so you will notice it. Uh, uh, normally you don't really notice price rises they might be like 5p or 10p these are now over 50p and in some cases a pound to one pound fifty Rowan sent out uh, a, 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 an interesting email with a letter explaining their price rises which actually I really appreciate being told the reasons why rather than just the prices going up. Uh, let me read a bit of their email. Other key costs increases we are witnessing are in vital raw materials like cotton which has doubled in price per kilo from September 2020 to September 21. Increases in freight container prices, which have been highly publicised, have risen from €3,000 per 40-foot container to €9,000 before additional port surcharges. Packaging has increased in price by 60% to 84% and electricity required to service our factory and warehouse has increased by 40%. Uh. It's a bit depressing, isn't it? Uh, but there we are. It, it, we need to talk about it uh, and, and to be honest about it. So if you come into the shop, uh, I, I will make it clear that prices have gone up. Uh, so it's so not much of a shock when, you're, when you come to, the, to, to pay for your goods. But just be aware going into other shops as well. Now it's down to uh, the shopkeeper, like me, when to put those prices up. Uh, but um, just just be on the lookout for, for it. So, for example, uh, Rowan felt a tweed, which you know I love and is a very, very popular yarn, has a recommended retail price of $7.95. Well, that went up for autumn and winter just gone. So what was that? September, October time. That went up to $8.95 a ball in a, just a general increase. I don't think Rowan has had a price increase for several years. And so to then be hit now with a double whammy of a, a, another price increase by Rowan uh, now makes this felted tweed recommended retail price £9.45. So what's that? £7.95, £8.95, pound fifty. That's what you'll see in most shops. Now, maybe online, like Wool Warehouse, may well be cheaper just because of the way things go. They're bigger, maybe have different overheads. So you uh, you might see it perhaps at £9 a ball, £8.99. It'll be interesting to see where they put their, their price point out. But the recommended retail price from Rowan for this is now £9.45. Kid Silk Haze, if you're a Kid Silk Haze fan, that's going up by 15%. West Yorkshire spinners have also put out uh, a price uh, increase too. So I think you're going to be seeing it across the board. So just understand that it's not us, the shopkeeper, doing it. Uh, it it's because from the creation, the manufacturing point of view, uh, of, of as, as literally Rowan have said, the raw materials and freight charges. So... Um, be prepared for that when you go into your local yarn shop to buy lots of yarn. Hope it doesn't put you off, but maybe it just, it makes us perhaps think about what we're going to knit uh, and, and how we're going to spend our money. But there we are. Other than that, there's nothing to report from the shop. All is ticking over well. People are buying yarn still and knitting because it's cold. Yes, should we go into it? Let's guess the year. <music> I think we all know which decade that is then, don't we? Oh, well, fond memories of that. Oh, all those TV programs. Yeah. Power suits, shoulder pads. Oh, Alexis and, and Dominique Devereaux. Mm. Oh, don't do that, Alexis. <laughs> oh, she was a fab character. And th that is literally her, isn't it? So then, what's the year? Mm, what do you think? Oh, you're going late. Mm, I would have gone early, maybe 84, 83. 
Or is it the, uh, no, you're right, it's like um, the British TV programmes. Uh, can you remember Howard's Way? Oh, I loved that on the Sunday. Jan. Oh, yes. And she would have great shirts with big, you know, like sort of, well, it's those shoulder pads. So we had the British equivalent because that was kind of like a soap. I loved that. All right, I'm going to go um because that was late 88 oh Cully Minogue time yes <laughs> oh oh such fond memories yes 1988 is what I'm going to go for what are you going to go for don't have to lock in yet you can ponder about it there we are okay right that's enough of guess the year <gasps> I've got a fabulous new fabric collection to show you <gasps> take a look at this <laughs> To the moon and back. Oh, oh, it's finally arrived. To the moon and back from Michael Miller Fabrics. And I am in love. Let's talk to you about this wonderful collection. To the moon and back. The main focus fabric from the collection will be this one. Lullaby Dreams. Look at that. Isn't it stunning? Clouds on moons stars lovely size print too so large that would be your main focus one and then we have lots of ditzy prints so the rainbows on now this is like a it, it it's they call it gray but actually it's it's a maybe mushroom and uh, that one is called Rainbow Sky. We then have Scattered Stars, a really simple star print. Scattered Stars. And then we have Big Star. And again on grey, but it is, and, and actually I don't know whether the computer can show that up again I think that's more mushroomy it's not your classic gray like you think elephant gray or school gray it is there's a definite sort of hint of brown in there and then one which I like but would then mess around a bit with your patchwork because it's directional love you script and it says love you to the moon and back let's show you that you then get a patchwork and a panel in the collection so let me show you the patchwork it is literally as if you've done uh, a charm pack and sewed all your charm packs together uh, let's do it that way there see and if you were to open that up, oh, oh wow, that would look stunning. Can I open it up? Look at that. <gasps> With those little pops of mustard yellow, that's like the same color as my background. How wonderful is that? So you could literally buy, what's that? Buy a meter, buy a meter and a half, put wadding in, put your backing on, Boom, done. And then just quilt along the lines. Or skip the wadding, get some nice cuddle fabric, sew it right sides together all the way around, leave a little hole, bag it out, and you have a, a blanket or a comforter. All done with, with that and no sewing at all. People will think you've done it. <laughs> Why not? Especially if you haven't got much time because you know the newborn is coming. Um, where, and there's the panel. Where's my panel? Oh, the panel. Now, Michael Miller usually do panels of a yard, uh, which is really nice because you, as I said, you, it's big enough to then just go round and you've almost got an instant quilt. You don't have to put a border on because they tend to come with a border. This one is one of the short ones. So it's just over half a meter. And you've got your stars at your top, then it goes solid and then there it is. Look at that. Love you to the moon and back. And then 
solid down to the stars again. So many options there you can do, you can put borders on that or you could, if you don't want that, you can take it right down to that and have it as a cushion and then, and then have that as the, the back for you, if it was an envelope cushion, loads of ideas. Are you a fan of panels? Let me know in the comments below if you are, because I know some people just get a bit confused with panels uh, and not, not really sure on what to do with them. So any ideas on what you could do with that panel, that would be great, because then it will inspire people to buy the panel and make something. Um, you know what it's like, sometimes you just can't think of, oh, what could I do with that? How can I turn that into something? Now, speaking about finished makes, <gasps> yes, it's that time to look at your finished makes in the gallery. <laughs>
If you are posting a picture of your finished object on Instagram, uh, if you could just add our hashtag, the wool patch, to your list of hashtags, that could just add us to the bottom. That would be great, and I could find it. If not, as I say, you can email me uh, to the address below, or you can DM me on Instagram, and, uh, and I can add it to the next gallery. It would be lovely to see. As always, I love the gallery. I love just slowing down, stopping for a bit and seeing what you're getting up to. And you're making some fabulous stuff, so keep it up. Now, oh, actually, speaking of, uh, of making, have you gone into your stash yet to find that special jelly roll? Yes, and, and, and to use it, the one that's been sat there for, how many years did you tell me last time? Was it two years? <laughs> have you, or have you gone to that, wonderfully big fat quarter pack that's like stacked high in that that, that nice rainbow colour. Have you got that one out? <laughs> you told me you were. Now, come on. A couple of you have got in contact with me to say that you have been inspired by that to, to get out that fabric. You felt sorry for it sitting in that stash tucked away for year on year that you thought, yes, do you know what? I am. This is, is going to be the year to get that out and make something. So Fizz has got in contact with me. You've often seen her in the gallery uh, making wonderful things. And she has said, yes, I'm, I'm inspired by you, Stuart. I am going to go into my stash and find that fabric that has been sat there so long and I'm going to set it free. So she has chosen two projects. Yes, she's setting free two projects. She's setting free a layer cake that has been in her stash for ages and a jelly roll. I'll show you what she said. Um, uh, this is the layer cake. I've already started on this one. I have eight squares done. So she's cracking away already. And the second one, she says, this is the jelly roll. Plans for this one too. It looked so good all rolled up. <laughs> oh, bless her. She goes, had to bite the bullet and unroll it. Otherwise I might have left it. I, I feel for you. I, that's why we buy it because we fall in love with it, don't we? Because it looks so glorious and we think, oh yes, okay, I'll, I'll have a project for that. And then five years later, it, it's still there. Um, and, and this has been in a stash for some time. So for Fizz to then say, had to bite the bullet and roll it, uh, it, you just think, ooh, so well done, Fizz, well done. Two projects started. Um, so are you going to do it? Go on. If a compare, you know, what we've just been talking about with price rises, well, now's the time. Go into that stash and set that fabric free. Oh, that might be a good hashtag. Set that fabric free. <laughs> uh, or set that wool free uh, and use it. Because ultimately we chose it for a reason and we 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 spent our, our hard earned money on it. So it's it should be enjoyed more and you can enjoy it more when it's out of your stash. <laughs> right, let's go back to guess the year and, and let me tell you the answer. Right, so what year did you, do you lock in at? You ready? <laughs> Classic 1980s. It is 1986. <laughs> I think you all got it right, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Fabulous. Fabulous. Oh, now we're going to be thinking of all the TV programmes. What was your favourite TV programme of the 80s? Was it Knight Rider? Baywatch? What other things? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Uh, I've got fond memories as, as a kid growing up in the 80s and I love TV too. So let us know what your favourite programme was of the, of the 80s. Right, some exciting news now, really exciting news. Here it is. <laughs> It's just wool, really, isn't it? <laughs> but there, cool. I, if if this was smell -o vision you would be overwhelmed because it just smells like I'm in a sheep's pen. Pwah! You can't get any more real than that. 
this yarn here, oh, there we are, that's more sheep, is a woolen spun yarn. There's woolen spun and worsted spun. And it's all about the way the fibers uh, are, are, are combed and carded and so forth. But basically, uh, keeping it very simple, woolen spun means uh the way it's spun it's it's perhaps not so uniformed because worsted they'll try and well they will get all the fibers in one direction and in and, and, and aligned and parallel so worsted then becomes a, a very smooth yarn and a very dense yarn because it's all been packed together all singing together in in the same direction uh and will give you wonderful stitch definition Woolen spun perhaps isn't so because of the, the carding process. The fibres are, are still a bit here, there and everywhere. So you get this, you, you probably won't even see it close up here. Um, you get this kind of almost haphazardy fluffy effect because the, the fibres are here, there and everywhere. So when it's knitted up, it's not very, you, you, you perhaps wouldn't get a strong, clear stitch definition from perhaps a woolen spun yarn. But what you will get is an incredibly lofty, lightweight yarn. And it will be so warm because of all those pockets of air, because of the unevenness. If I get a strand of, of this wool and I'll, I'll unply it it's woolen spun four ply weight but it's actually made up of two plies <gasps> look at that isn't that fabulous now can you see all those fibers there all here there and everywhere higgledy pickledy so just imagine when that's knitted up all that air being trapped in there and how warm it will be and also how light it will feel too. So uh, two plies, but that weight when put together, when ply together becomes what we call a four ply weight uh, or fingering weight. It is very popular, that type of yarn. I think it's very popular over in America. Am I right? Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you, you get that feel that fingering weight is often more talked about or more used because of shawls and socks. Uh, I know I'm a big fan of four ply fingering weight um, and a lot of my customers are. So I wanted to keep with four ply, even though my 2020 collection was a four ply, it just made sense uh, to do another four ply. But look, look at this. So when it's hanked up it will have a great yardage and then oh yeah there's another 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 whiff of sheep look at that and the beauty of this full traceability from a farm five minutes from my house yep I discovered it during the second lockdown when I was going for runs and I was running along a beautiful trail uh, through two fields and I saw the farm and uh, I couldn't believe it to have it that close. And it's a mixture of uh, ten, 10 sheep. Some of them are Rylands and some of them are Cheviots. <sighs> and uh, it's just wonderful. And it's gone from there up to the mill in Yorkshire. So what was that? A couple of hundred miles and back again to me where I dye it with woad in my garden. Boom. Now, talking about which we were last episode, the, the planet and trying to be as green as possible. And as Mickey rightly said, if everyone just does a little bit, then we can all perhaps put all those little bits together and hopefully make a difference. 90 hanks will be available. So I'm going to be dying over the coming weeks when it gets warmer and I'll be outside dying all of this beautiful blue. And for the first time,
So Lavenham Blue and Norwich Red will be the collection of 2022. <gasps> right, I've got to get designing some labels, logos and everything. Ah, oh, so more to come. So watch this space. Right, that's half an hour whizzed by. I've got my gingham out, ready to make another Fairfield button up shirt. I know you've got that, yes, that, that jelly roll to make or that, that layer cake to make into something. So I'm gonna leave you to get on with that and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.